Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Oh, I love this intro. I didn't even play the original game, and all I need is... Let's just say your hour has come again. Also, still foreshadowing. Wake up and smell the ashes. That sound. Is that manic foreshadowing? Welcome to City 17. Main antagonist introduction. You can die in the intro. That is actually purely logical. The guards don't need to kill people with these electric sticks. It's just weird that once they are after you, you die almost immediately. Don't drink the water. They put something in it to, to make you forget. I don't even remember how I got here. You know something's wrong. I can't take too longer, they'll get suspicious. You are free to move all the time. There are no cutscenes forcing you to sit back and watch. Meet up with you later. The fact that you can grab and destroy almost anything is amazing. Falls have an impact. Mechanic interaction. This is what I call a perfectly closed world. It's not just invisible walls, it's closed in such a natural way. Oh man, that looks terrifying. Hope I won't have to fight that. Wait. I don't really understand why this is here, but I don't have any level design experience, so it's definitely interesting. You can't sprint in the intro. The suit helps you later with that, but... Decorations of the environment. These planks are a nice way to show the way. I'm Alex Vance. Light is too bright on Alex's face. On the other hand, the lighting and graphics are stunning for a game, so... Don't do it simply, when you can do it in a cool way. Alex, probably. The pseudo machine secret entrance. Oh, I love this lab so much. Firstly, the mini teleporter. Such a cool detail. Actually, the cactus is not the only thing you can teleport. You can even teleport yourself, but in that case, you break it. Secondly, there are so many little hints of what will happen. This door isn't fully closed. Your suit is behind it. This picture is askew. It opens a secret entrance. This headcrab runs away. Mechanic introduction, the sequel. Good job, Gordon. Throwing that switch and all. I can see your MIT education really pays for itself. Good style of humor. Also, although this story is sci-fi, it's nice well put here technology that was used at the time of the release of the game. The bar with him. Get about that thing. Nice way to make the story a little bit longer. This fish is scary, so a raven home foreshadowing. I think you dropped this back in Black Mesa. The crowbar. Sound randomization. I like there's a sound that tells you you killed someone. Areas in this game are small and full of content. That's good level design. Music here is occasional, but amazing. This slider makes a lot of sense while I'm rewatching this, but when I played the game itself, it felt a little unnecessary. Right here I expected some kind of putting the box to the window payoff, but this just feels like Lado Ex Machina. Am I the only one confused by this wall? I started hitting the stone in the middle, but that's probably my fault. When coming outside, the light almost blinds you for a while. You can't kill an enemy during jump down animation. PewDiePie actually said about this part that when he played it for the first time, his mind was blown away because it was the first time in a game ever to use in-game physics to solve puzzles. Man Hex. They are so annoying, yeah, the game wouldn't be the same without it. Wait, do I already have nostalgia? I played this game for the first time last month. This puzzle took me a long time to solve. And that's what I like about this game. The player has to think about what he's doing. He has to be clever. This game is clever. Radioactivity meter sounds. Headcrab zombie introduction. Is the airboat all gassed up and ready to go? Whenever you feel the game might get boring after a while, it presents you with some kind of a new mechanic. Hazardous radiation levels detected. Voice indications. If you hit a wall, you push through it. Captain Haddock. 
What other jumps? Hey down there! Supplies! Huh, <laughs> thanks. Ragdolls. Nice. For a while I thought, uh, oh, this is locked, I have to find another way. And then I remembered I have a gun. Using the environment as obstacles. Good news is, the Vortigaunt's working his magic on your airboat, so you'll have a little more firepower going forward. Distracting the player during a part where otherwise he would have to wait. <laughs> Epic helicopter boss fight. Hey, it's Jima. For some reason, I really like this jump. I'm safe now. What's that drafting by doing here? Using in on a reliable local teleport technology. Something the Combine still hasn't mastered. I really do appreciate the voice acting in this game. We figured out how to use Zen as an unexpressed axis. This elevator scene just shows you this world is alive. Are you blaming me? A little bit of drama to spice up the story. That's the old passage to Ravenholm. We don't go there anymore. I'll have to go there, won't I? Gravity gun. Dog. Big but cute. Oh, Ravenholm. I get goosebumps when I only remember it. Mostly because of headcrabs and the fact I didn't have any ammo. It's all ready for you. Hop in and I'll lower you down to the beach. Ooh, a buggy. Here the fun begins. G-Man again? I couldn't have asked for a finer volunteer. Bazooka introduction. There's one thing I didn't like about the buggy. It's the fact that when your speed gets too high and you steer, you can easily get into a drift and stop. A giant magnet. Walking on parts that aren't supposed to be walked on. Excuse me, what? There are multiple ways out of this level. I just waited till the train passed and rode into the tunnel, but ended up at the same place as this guy. I'd be glad if there was a light on the buggy. But you know what? I just looked back in the script and realized all of the bad game design I pointed out is more like things that I think could have been better. So let's just rename the bad design counter to could have been better design counter. So now I'm the anti-lion queen? Yes, they're called anti-lions. Crazy, right? Ooh, poor guy. I didn't notice at first, but it's a nice fact that the bouncy balls are kept in these little cages so they don't, well, bounce. Oh, so this is the placing box payoff I was waiting for. Entanglement? What could possibly go wrong? What's behind this? Oh, that's right, a secret tunnel. Man, even the camping parts in this game are so good. Red light atmosphere. I like it. Mustman, you traitor! The mechanic of placing turrets is a really good game design, since you have to think about your tactics and place them correctly. The squad mechanic is cool and all, there are just two problems with it. One, they usually stand in your way. And two, sometimes they start following automatically and they die a lot just because of it. If you didn't play the game yourself, there's a ladder right here. But for me, it feels a little unnecessary. This lift is going down for the enemies and since it kinda fits the gap between your path and the place you'd like to get to, I think it would be nicer to just use that instead. Unfortunately, the railing on the other side is too high for that. Go for it. I'd say this puzzle room is a piece of level design art. Am I having a deja vu? The enemy destroys something and by that makes a way for you. I love the devs keep always the environment diverse, even inside the buildings. You go from a corridor with yellow and blue walls to one with completely yellow ones, then you run through a destroyed building with white walls and end up in the underground with fire lighting the wall. I like there's two of these, one leads to a certain death, and the other gets you up. Took me a while to realize. 
This exposition part might be boring for someone, but for me, it just showed me that the lore goes really deep. You see the striders coming out of the citadel. You see where the gunships are stored and repaired. Later, you even see some other creatures you won't even find against. It's such a poor thing you lose the crowbar. Well, at least the gravity gun gets OP. This citadel level is just a build up and preparation for the final fight. There's no other way but to imprison yourself to continue in the game. Well, if it isn't Gordon Freeman at last. Finally, we meet in person. This redemption arc ex machina is actually pretty good. When you lost all your hope, suddenly there comes a change of heart of the one character that betrayed you. There's always a bigger fish. Essentially impossible. Here comes the final parkour. The best time to say that I like the simplicity of parkour mechanics in this game. You don't need any slope sliding or wall running. All you need is to move and jump. I think the best games are usually those that have only a few simple mechanics and squeeze everything they can out of them. Go back. It took me a while to realize what I have to do here, but I think it's a nice fact that before doing it, you have to take down two gunships and may accidentally shoot one ball into the portal and realize that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Got to get out of here. Maybe we still have. Time, Dr. Freeman? Is it really that time again? I didn't like the ending at first, but now I realize it's one of the best there possibly could be. Have you accomplished your mission? Yes. Does it leave you wanting more? Definitely. Therefore, it completely serves its purpose. This game can be described in one word. Amazing. Amazing level design, amazing storytelling, the graphics aren't that bad for an 18 year old game. It perfectly handles mechanic interactions and the performance. It definitely left its mark in the gaming industry. Some might say that I am too kind to this game. And to that I answer, yes I am. In fact, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it after 15 minutes of gameplay and loved it till the end. Because as this video suggests, this game gave me and other gamers a reason to love it. And therefore it gets 84 points of good game design to 11 points could have been better design. And that is 88%.